Today we went to Cooler Master's headquarters to look at a haptic ass chair or an ass haptic chair. We're not sure, we'll find out. I'm a little scared mostly because I think we'll be demonetized for it. Is it actually gonna kill me? Oh no, it's not. Oh no, it's not done yet. It's still going. <laughs> What's it doing? We'll also be looking at heat pipe solutions for different options with coarse versus fine sensor powder, looking at single and two phase immersion cooling, and finally, we'll be looking at some shoes. It's, it's a computer case, so let's go do that. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Montec Sky 2 PC case. The Montec Sky 2 is a new case that focuses on lower budget accessibility while still offering core functionality basics. The case uses side intake to enable surround glass for the front and the side, and it includes several pre-installed fans and mesh ventilation along the bottom edges, and again, that right side panel to allow air access for inlets both closer to the GPU and the CPU. Learn more about the Sky 2 at the link in the description below. All right, next we're gonna talk about some of the power supply stuff, but I am going to sit in this throne, which is apparently called uh, Orb X, and it, for some reason, this feels like a very awkward seated position to do a video. For some reason, it, it don't bring the camera lower. That's not better. <laughs> For some reason, this is a haptic chair. Um, I don't know exactly what the haptics do. I know that there, there is haptic feedback in the ass region, and I believe there is also haptic feedback in the back region. Um, why? Why? Yeah. Oh, so when you Unfortunately, we're gonna have to censor everything he said because we can't show that type of content on YouTube for why you would have a haptic chair. But uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about is, uh, is the power supply stuff here. Okay, so it's going to be a vapor chamber is the answer for this. This is a prototype. Uh, so it's for power supplies, a shell, and the cage outside is aluminum. It's got some fins diced in it. You normally do wanna try and use the cage if you can, for, uh, for any kind of cooling because, I mean, it's a lot of surface area, it's a lot of metal. You can actually get some benefit from it. So making it aluminum is good from that angle. It is also expensive, which is why you don't normally see uh, cases for power supplies as aluminum. They're typically stamped steel and they don't typically heat sink uh, into them. But this has got a couple of heat pipes and it will have a vapor chamber here. I asked earlier, what components on the power supply do you think you'll attach this to? And uh, they're still sort of doing the R&D on that and figuring out where exactly you would attach it. I would think you'd probably do something from the APFC FETs into, uh, into the vapor chamber eventually. And then on this, this is just the other side of it. And uh, I don't know if I'm using this throne wrong or if it just always slides away, but uh, <laughs> the other side of it, I don't think this, the plan is not to make a fanless passive solution. You could combine these and make a passive solution but either way, uh, it would sock it together like this, and you have a very compact case for this, this sort of uh, just working prototype with heat pipes and blocks on both sides. Normally with power supplies, you see smaller fin stacks just on top of something like APFC FETs, maybe uh, near anywhere you have like MOSFETs, for example, and then you need a high pressure fan to push air into it because the component density is very high. And so, I got it. It's, it's all right. <laughs> I won't drop the prototypes. <laughs> and, uh, so for fans, the two fans here are, uh, one of them has holes in the sides, which I'm going to talk about in a second. That's the thing that makes it unique. It's also a, a thin fan, obviously. And then the other one uses a rain on the outside. Rain on the outside is not inherently unique to fan designs. Uh, you'll see it a lot on GPUs and things like that. But um, on this one, the there's a few reasons you do it one is to reduce vibration as it transfers into longer fins on a 120 i don't know how much of a problem that realistically is on larger fans like 200s it can become a problem because uh as the blade gets longer depending on the quality of the plastics you're gonna have different amounts of vibration that can create an undesirable frequency for the user as it goes through the whole blade and on the large fans the 200s they used to actually shatter so the blade would break apart because, uh, I mean, they were just too long, the plastic was too weak. Anyway, the outer rain helps with stabilization, that's why that's there. And it also helps with static pressure, 
uh, with forcing the air through. And uh, it's, it's mostly just a, um, a stability thing though. So that's one of the fans. This, these, this is a power supply fan they're gonna introduce soon. It's not out quite yet. And then this one, the thinner one, has these holes in the sides, which uh, I think just helps with, it's, it'd be more of a dispersed flow thing, like maybe more conical, for example, than like a wider flow where you're able to pull air from all sides of the fan, including through the cage. Normally you don't want holes in the actual fan housing because you want to control where the air is going. In a power supply application though, where you potentially have a small area, uh, especially if it's compact enough to require a fan like this, you have a small area with a lot of components all over the place. As long as they're not too packed together, this could help with distributing the air across the components in the power supply more evenly. So um, that is enough of this haptic chair. I, I think we've had uh, a demonetizing amount of ass haptics in this video. So we're gonna move on to something else. First of all, for these, you probably saw this in a news video and we covered it a while ago. And this case is actually going to be produced. So it's not just a showpiece. They're gonna make it in limited quantities. It will probably be extremely expensive. Currently the plan is to ship these as pre-built systems. Uh, Cooler Master seems like it's leaning more that way than parting them out as standalone things. You can let them know how you feel about that in the comments if you'd rather buy them uh, without the rest of the computer. But for both systems are using mini ITX. The sneaker is currently set up where it fits a, a 360 rad in the bottom, so it can do three 120s. There's one 120 in the side right here. And then interestingly, they've got the CPU over on this back side of it. And on the front side, they're running a riser cable under and up to the GPU. So as far as like a case goes, obviously totally impractical, both of these. Very different building style. And uh, thermally, you're probably just shooting for acceptable or runs without throttling. So you shouldn't expect a lot function-wise. But this is kind of getting into that territory where Inwin's done it in the past. You build something really different and unique and try to ship it just to fill a higher end or a different market segment. But what we're curious about, first question I have for the audience, uh, for comments below for your engagement cha challenge, is what do you think you would reasonably pay, assuming you could buy these standalone? So you can just type in sneaker and give us a price, type in shark and give us a price, uh, or if you wouldn't buy it, then just say wouldn't buy, and that's fine too, or zero dollars. But the sneaker currently, they're planning to do some collaboration, so there's some sports teams, as I understand it, on the roster to do some branding where uh, I'm assuming it'll be like logos and color changing to match the sport team colors. And I, that's, I think that's the main angle for this really. This is part of the C, C Mod X uh, side of Cooler Master that they've shown off in the past. And I mean, other than that, it's, it's just an interesting looking computer case. I, the function doesn't matter too much, but we'll go through some things where power supply, for example, runs a pass-through cable. So the actual power supply is mounted over in here and they're running a pass through to the back. Personally, I think they should color the cable white or something and then run it through clips up here and tie it like a shoelace, but that's just me. The shark, so I, I, don't, I don't really know what I think about this. This reminds me of like the Lianli train or the Lianli yacht. Those are actual cases. You should look them up uh, where it's, you just look at it and you're kind of like, why would you make a shark for a PC case? Uh, and the answer is nobody knows, but it's a shark PC case, <laughs> mini ITX. They're running the video card through a riser again, this time up to the back side of it. So it's, it's way up here, uh, kind, of, kind of a cool attention to detail thing, but the Wi-Fi antenna is actually covered in the, the fin, I guess. I don't know, there's gotta be a better name for it. <laughs> it's in the shark fin though. It's got a rib cage in here, non-functional. It's just part of the chassis. So the center structurally is all metal, uh, but the rest of it will be almost certainly plastic just for weight reasons. Same for the sneaker right now. It's plastic exterior. So they're not using aluminum or anything like that at the moment for at least most of these panel components. It allows better color matching. So I don't know, those are some of the weird cases that are actually gonna be consumer available. And now we're gonna look at a couple of the other things that are in here like the uh, Novex style cooling. So this is a two-phase immersion cooling solution. Uh, these are not brand new or anything. They're used in servers. It's still somewhat experimental, so you don't see too many of them out there. Most servers are still just either water or purely air. Uh, but this, the most commonly used fluid that 
you may have encountered before is called a Novak fluid. It's a 3M solution. And uh, I, Bauer, for example, used it in one of his um, AIOs in the past where it allows you to get potentially lower temperatures while also being able to reclaim the fluid as it evaporates. So we have footage of this when it's on and you can see these the uh, bubbles that pop up on these different finstat or cold plates basically that are on top of the heating elements and as they boil up you either need to constantly refill it or you need to capture and reuse it and so typically the solution for this type of thing is to use condensers so in Romans for example he used uh, a condenser built into the cooling unit so that he could recapture and then reuse the coolant that's being used because I mean if it runs dry then you have no cooling anymore so that's what's back here all these copper pipes that are running down this is part of a condenser solution it's hooked up to a chiller I think they're running water through the pipes as well actually yes they definitely are and they're just chilling that and using that to uh, capture the, the the vapor as it boils off and return it back down for the rest of this, I mean, on the, the back side, there's not really anything to see other than the heating element and the chiller. I think it was running two 200 watt units. So this was 200 watts, that was 200 watts. And specifically what was being tested uh, actually on these four solutions was different types of, uh, on top of the block here, different types of spacing for these pin fins as they're more commonly called by say EVGA, for example, where you're going for either density or you're going for a thickness. And so one of the issues where you do too much density is you get these sort of cavitation bubbles, like you would see in an ultrasonic cleaner, that if you can't pop them or get them to come back up, you end up just having this air pocket surrounding the copper. And that's no good because air is just an insulator for any kind of cooling ability. So that's what they're testing here, prototyping. Uh, this, I think they were saying is some kind of like diamonds type solution. Um, that's sintered onto the surface of the heating element cold plate. Don't have a lot of detail on that, but kind of interesting stuff on the cooling R&D side. And now we're gonna move over to one of the other tables. Okay, next station, pretty cool. So uh, there's a couple different types of heat pipes. We talked about this in the past where most commonly you see sintered heat pipes. There's also a composite where they do sintered plus like a weave or a mesh. And uh, that's the one we didn't deep cool on when they said it, it was composite and then it was actually only sintered when we cut it in half. But uh, those are the common types. What I didn't know until today is that sintered also has multiple subtypes. So sintered copper powder is the, uh, we'll show some B-roll of it, but it's literally just copper powder that's inside the pipe and it is heated onto the surface of it. So it ends up be sort of forming uh, a single piece with the outer heat pipe. And what it helps with is capillary force as the liquid moves through the pipe because you have an evaporator end where you have the heat source you have a condenser end where it's not as hot and uh, there's a little bit of liquid in the pipe as well. So the sintered powder helps add surface area and it also helps bring as it reforms into a liquid back down to the cold plate to then be used again. For the two different types of uh, powder that I didn't know about, there's a coarse powder for sintered and there's a fine powder. What they're doing here that they were showcasing that again, I was personally un unaware of in the server world is using a composite of coarse and fine together in the same heat pipe to form something that they say helps with the capillary force to push the water back through longer runs or distances where you have something like this. Heat pipes are extremely long on this. You gotta get the water back as efficiently as you can. And uh, so apparently doing the composite solution within the pipe is what helps with that. I asked, is this using consumer products at all? The answer was not really, but sometimes in laptops. So. If we do a quick pan over here, uh, the top left cooling solution, that's a, that's a laptop cooling solution and something like that might use a mix of both. But otherwise, it's primarily a, a server thing. This demo is just kind of fun, uh, but it's not very overly scientific. So the paint on the end of this is a color changing paint. You'll see it co change color as I put it into the uh, heated water tubs here. So the, this is a 50 degree Celsius one. This is a 10 degree Celsius one. And all this is doing is showing you how in sort of a more visual way a heat pipe works. So this thing, very heavy, this is just a copper rod. That's all it is. There's no liquid inside of it. It doesn't have any sintered powder or anything like this. Uh, this is a more standard heat pipe. 
where it is centered internally. It's got the liquid, it's fully completed and uh, produced. And I mean, as, as scientifically as we can with the solution here, should see a difference in uh, how quickly the paint changes color. Actually, this one's getting kind of hot to hold already, whereas the other is not. So as you can see in the B-roll footage we have, the color changes on the actual heat pipe, whereas this just straight copper rod, it, it, it's not even hot to hold at this point, and the other one was getting pretty warm. So this is a demo we actually did at Cooler Masters Factory previously for the how heat pipes are manufactured video. Okay, that's it for looking at Cooler Masters headquarters. They have a lot more stuff here. It is an overwhelming amount. We'll show some B-roll of it during this section. So there's some new fans that we'll be talking about closer to CES in January. And I mean, the rest of it is just a really cool showroom where it's a new building that was put together. Uh, I've been told the outside looks like a heat sink. I'm not sure, we'll try to confirm that. But check back for more and subscribe to the channel because we're gonna have a lot of factory tours in Taiwan. We'll also be looking at prototypes from some of the other companies, including Lian Li. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.